All right, hello, 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 everyone. My name is Diamond Rivera of Diamond Rivera Films, and you are tuned into another special episode of Live Discussions with Diamond Podcast. And tonight here, we have all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, uh, an amazing couple that I've seen over the years uh, through their workshops, their classes, and performances, uh, the amazing Fuquan and Candace from Fuego y Yellow Dance Company. How's it going, guys? Hello, hello. Yes, man. Um, I'm really thankful that we were able to do this tonight. Uh, for me, like I said before, my experience of learning uh, about you both was really through social media, through Facebook and the, the various classes that you guys have had over the years. Uh, for me, too, as well, I'm a big supporter of Down South dance events. I love Down South. Me, I'm really in New Orleans, but I've always wanted to go to Atlanta. Um, and seeing over the years the just the love and the atmosphere that especially Atlanta gives, uh, I think it was really important to get artists like yourself to come on tonight. Well, the events here, um, they're kind of scattered and they go through a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, like um, a lot of the other states have these larger events that have these 10 year, you know, thresholds. But I mean, literally, there was the Hot Atlanta Salsa Congress, the Atlanta Salsa Congress. Now there's the Atlanta Salsa Bachata Festival. Mm -hmm. There was the Atlanta Salsa Congress again. Uh, yeah, there was the Atlanta festival. Bachata Festival. It's, <laughs> it's so inconsistent here. So there'll be some good years of like a couple festivals. It'll be good mm -hmm. years where we have like five festivals. And I think this coming year, we're only going to possibly have, I mean, depending on COVID, maybe one event. Um, mm -hmm. So it's pretty weird. Um, Atlanta is just, it works very, it's very weird because it's, it's such a random city, such a random state. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. But yeah, no, when we have been, it's always been fun to have the events here because we don't have to travel very far and not travel. <laughs> nice change. Um, and it's nice to see our own people sometimes, you know, our own like, yeah. friends and family and such on the scene here. Um, but I prefer traveling, though. That's just me. Mm. Like, getting out of the city, away from people that I see all the time. No, absolutely. And Candace, how about you? Like, how is kind of, how have you been really kind of adjusting with really the lack of events kind of happening nowadays, especially in our states, really? Um, yeah, I mean, it's been sad. You know, we had our list of events that we were going to. So, you know, we were super soaked about everything. And then, you know, COVID hit. And then now it's just kind of like, like, OK, <laughs> you know, 2021, cross your fingers. Let's hope, you know. So. No, absolutely. And for me as well, being a dancer in New York, um, we've seen our fair share now of events slowly trying to trickle in and pop up, um, some successful, some not. And it's a really good similarity that you talked about, Fuquan, about that, you know, especially with Atlanta, you have so many events. Some of them are really good. Some of them don't work out as well. But I definitely know we're going to get really into that. But for me, too, um, I think just as important as it is to know about the traveling, the performing, the teaching the experiences you've had over time, I think it's also very important to understand from where both of you started dancing and how really dance kind of, I guess, in a sense, maybe changed your life uh, and showed you kind of a new world. So for me, I think it's so much more important as well to understand when we go all the way back to the beginning, <laughs> to where it really started. Okay. Um, okay, I guess I'll start. Um... Let's see, back in high school, I had a friend from Venezuela um, and I kind of had a crush on him at the time. And I think this was like my senior year in high school, maybe. Uh, we would have like house parties and so at the end of the night, he would put on his music. So he put on like merengue and bachata mm -hmm. and salsa and stuff. And me and my friend kind of started learning the dances because, you know, we're trying to impress this guy. Yeah. Um, but eventually I kind of fell in love with like the music and the dance and I thought it was really fun and so you know got old enough started going out to the club so my first club was like a Latin club um, and back in the day it was they played actual like reggaeton hip-hop mm. and they would play salsa merengue and bachata they don't really do that anymore now it's just like hip-hop <laughs> but yeah. um, you know that's where we started so you know I went to the club and I was just like oh this is amazing like you know I get to dance all these dances 
And I really kind of fell in love with it too, because you know, I would go to the non-Latin clubs and mm -hmm. basically it was like, you were dancing for four hours and you don't even know who you're dancing with. Like you have to check behind you like, oh, okay, that's who I'm dancing. But like the Latin clubs, like I can actually see who I'm dancing with, you know, bachata, merengue, salsa. I'm like, oh, this is fun. You get to change it up. Um, but pretty much my friends were like, not so into um, the Latin dancing as I was. And I started to really fall in love with it. So I decided to get on Google and I was just like, salsa lessons in my city because I didn't really know how to salsa. We were just kind of looking at people doing it and, you know, shuffling our feet. Um, so I looked it up and there was an event um, that one of our instructors down here um, had a long time ago. And one of my girlfriends decided to come with me and we did this event. It was like a small festival and I fell in love. Everybody was so nice and welcoming. I met like a bunch of people. And, you know, from there, I started going to socials and I started, you know, started off social dancing and, you know, started becoming more in love with it. And then eventually I decided to um, I met Fuquan and he introduced me to this team who was having rehearsals on the weekends because I was working throughout the week. And so anybody that I wanted to take lessons from, they all had classes throughout the week, but no weekend stuff. And so I joined this company, Proyecto Barrio out here in Atlanta. And that's where I started, you know, really getting the structure of, you know, the dance and learning the rules and learning different types of things. And um, we started performing. So, you know, we were learning choreography as well, became like a little family. And that's basically where it kind of skyrocketed for me. And that's basically it. That's my dance career. Um, mm -hmm. I used to be a gymnast back okay. in the day. Um, so I did gymnastics growing up, um, started like in preschool and stopped like beginning of my high school career mm -hmm. um but outside of that like i just i started in latin dancing started in the club okay and then you know just kind of trickled down to the company and then now we have our own company mm. so i love it I that's love my story <laughs> no I, absolutely and at least before we get to you fuquan i think it's amazing like you said candace you starting out as a gymnast and realizing too when it comes to like especially latin dancing splits tricks things <laughs> get involved and I mean, I could definitely say you had the one up on many of a females kind of coming. It definitely into helped. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Um, so for me, my dancing started um, when I was young. I was 10, uh, maybe. Yeah, it was 10. And my grandmother put me in all the arts possible. So I was in theater, photography, acting, and dance. I mean, ballet, hip hop, West African. Um, and I kind of did all this in different iterations here and there over the years. And I kind of scaled back for a while um, to do martial arts. And I did martial arts for like 15 years. And then back again from martial arts, back into dance again for Latin dance for the past uh, nine and a half years. Is that how long it's been? Yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, I danced for a couple of different ballet companies in Atlanta as a, as a, as a kid. Is that a kid? I mean, I wasn't an adult yet. So yeah, as a kid, I danced in ballet companies and even for a short stint again, um, when I was still training Latin, I was part of another ballet company here, um, Proya, Pro, uh, Alex Proya's Dance Project, um, and did a couple last shows with um, that company before I just didn't have the time for it and was only doing, you know, Latin dance. So my background is very, very, very long, um, but my major... I guess my major dance is where I specialize in like ballet, contemporary, and West African, um, which that all very much so helps out with the fact that I do, you know, African based dancing now, right? Um, and it's funny because, you know, you learn about the Orisha from West African dancing versus the Orisha from like Afro Cuban dancing. And it's just so funny because I'm like, oh shit, I had no idea this would be handy. Like, you know, because as a kid, I hated it. I was like, why am I doing this right now? Like, this makes no sense to me. This is not me. This is not my people. Like, why am I doing this? And now that I found a dance and I love, I'm like, it really helps that I learned this. This is, I'm glad I had this background. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the ballet because a lot of our pieces are all like contemporary fusion pieces. So, like, you know, yeah. being able to have lines and being able to express things and, the martial arts training for stunts work and we do all these tricks i mean it's just it's funny how life kind of gave me this avenue that i didn't even know i was working on or working towards so that's my kind of short and steady career wow. <laughs> well i mean still i would say in a sense for both of you the blossoming career because we understand too is that i mean me coming from new york and being a, a latin dancer i would say now going on 23 24 years now and then 
also being exposed to people from the South, especially when it came to that dancing culture, for me, I can say there's really a big difference, especially in hospitality, um, inclusiveness. Um, so, so for, I mean, in, in, in a sense, it can definitely get tricky at times. But uh, one thing I can definitely say with Atlanta in general, that it's just very rich in culture. And that's something I've always appreciated. I mean, from my understanding of Georgia, but Atlanta specifically being very diverse in terms of just um, different backgrounds. And especially now, like you said, with dancing, because um, like you said, Candace, earlier where you came from in dancing, we're talking about the clubs. This is not when we talk about non-Latin clubs. There's a complete different atmosphere. From talking to DJs, they could they totally agree. There's a different yeah. um, atmosphere, a different ambiance. And then when you transition into going into the Latin clubs, I would say maybe there's a little more structure or you know what you're going to hear. And the, the dancing is kind of you understand where it is. So for me too, now realizing of both of you starting the dancing, um, having different experiences as well, where or how was that first experience of you two meeting like when everything kind of started? We 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 have very very different uh, <laughs> ideas of our first meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll I'll give you a little bit of a background. So there was an event here called the Atlanta Bachata Festival, and yes. they were supposed to have their last year this year before COVID hit. So they didn't mm -hmm. have it this year, and I believe. I believe at this point that so last year was their last year having it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was my first festival. Was it my first festival? Or was Atlanta the first festival? No, I think that was. I think Bachata festival. festival was the first was the first festival I ever did. Mm -hmm. And I was this company called um, Bachata Monte that doesn't it doesn't exist anymore. And I was you know in my Bachata phase because that was the uh, first team I was given the chance to perform with. Mm. The team that I wanted to perform with didn't deem me worthy at the time to learn. Okay. The uh, so, <laughs> different story. Okay. So um, with this team and we go to tech and I have two performances to do with them. One on Friday, one on Saturday. Uh, one's with the student team and one's with the semi-pro team. Um, and I think the first night, Friday night, we ended up opening the show, which back then, which was like, you know, shit eight years ago i think mm. that was like a good thing in congress typically you want to be like the opening show or like towards the end right yes. like you don't want to really be in the, like the first 15 unless you're like the first show to open right like it was like oh shit, we're opening the show and then saturday night we ended up closing so like i was feeling myself like by saturday night, i'm like oh shit, my team closed mm -hmm. i had a solo during the piece like i was like i'm feeling myself right now <laughs> get out <laughs> and like all these girls asking me to dance i'm like oh yeah baby let's do this right and then uh, one of my friends, which is really random, um, acquaintance more so the friend, um, but I knew this guy from high school. He was like, yo, yo, Fuquan, you gotta meet this girl. She's a great dancer. Mm -hmm. Once again, this is my version of the story. It's like, hey, this is a great <laughs> dancer there. And he points me to Candace, and Candace is just this black chick with braids with some whipped cream vodka in her hand. Oh. Like, what's up? And I'm like, I'm good. Like I'm, I'm really, I'm really good. Like so, I'm like you know, we say hi. I think maybe I had a hug, kissing the cheek, whatever. And I think I maybe danced with her, but I didn't think anything of it because I was like on my own thing, my own. Yeah. Like, I was just in my own world at that point, and I was also chasing her friend at that point, like trying to like find her friend that night, right? <laughs> so, and then it just over time we became friends, and from friends I asked her to come to uh, accept a rehearsal for this company I was on after the festival, mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, you want to dance, you know, I feel like, you know, you should come here. We're looking for people anyways, come join us. And then that's how we kind of got together as dancers. And she was my partner for most of the uh, time at this company. And yeah. Yeah. And I would say Candace, is that, is that kind of the, 100%? I mean, <laughs> it's generally how it okay. went. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think the same guy, he was just like, Oh, you know, this is my friend. He, he mm -hmm. performed. And back then, like he said, that was his first Congress. That was basically my first Congress too. And so I really didn't know what was going on. Like I said, I started out social dancing. Mm -hmm. So I've never really even taken classes before. I was just learning as I was going on the social dance floor. Mm -hmm. um, so like he introduced us and I was just, he was like, hey, this is my friend I went to high school with. And I was just like, hey, what's up? But you know, at that time I was like into Latin boy. So I wasn't really thinking of anything of him anyway. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> Cream vodka, he swears I was drunk. And, and personally, I don't drink. 
really like mm. all my friends know I don't drink even like through high school I'm not against drinking I will have a cup or two oh, I will right. you know anything really okay but I don't like I don't like getting drunk because I don't like the feeling like everybody's yeah. like you know they get woo and they get like that my personality doesn't change like that I just get sick I get clumsy and I just want to like go Clums, to sleep clumsier clumsier and then I go to sleep. <laughs> So I'm not really a big drinker, but me and my friends, we did get the whipped cream vodka. And at the time, like my personality, I was just, you know, having fun. So in his eyes, he, I looked drunk, even though I don't think I even had a drink. And you would have to really down mm. two cans of whipped cream vodka to even like feel anything because it's like, I don't know, it's, it's whipped cream. Like who eats the whole can of whipped cream? So <laughs> if anything, I might've had like two squirts. <laughs> so that's where we differ in the story <laughs> but um yeah you know we met and when we were first introduced both of us weren't thinking anything of each other yeah. until like you know he started saying he was talking to my friend so me and my friend were together and so we ended up mm -hmm. you just being acquaintances from there so all right but it, it looks in, it looks in the sense that whipped cream vodka got you guys together so <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's a real big hinging point in that story. Yeah, like the common denominator was that whipped cream vodka. Yeah. But oh, but then kind of real sponsor Fuego Yellow, we're down for it. All right. I like that. And and now kind of that helps me transition into understanding when was that point when you realize that okay, we're working together, we're able to gel together. When was the point where uh the creation of Fuego Yellow kind of started? Okay. So I, I've i always known that I was going to be in the arts. I only went to college. Um, like I have multiple, I have multiple talents, right? Most mm -hmm. things I like to cultivate, most things I like to do, but I'm a pragmatist and I know that there's only so much you can do with your time on earth, right? We only have yeah. 24 hours in a day, seven days in a week. You can't kill yourself doing everything. No matter what anybody says, you have to try to find ways to manage your time well, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I truly went to college just as a fallback. Like I majored in economics. I love economics. I love studying it. I think I'm going to law school, being a lawyer. But I was like, do I really want to spend my life behind a desk for like 100 hours a week just to make a lot of fucking money? Like a lot of money, but I'm not going to be actually be able to spend it because I'm behind a desk. Mm -hmm. And I spent my entire life in the arts. And for the longest time, I knew I was going to open my own kung fu studio um, and teach kung fu like for the rest of my life. Like I knew I wanted to do that. Um, I was studying Chinese medicine. Like I learned wow. Chinese. I moved to China. Like I would get all this stuff to like become a Kung Fu master and was on that route um, when dance came back into my life. And while I didn't think that dance would be like my, my new passion, it just happens to where things happen in the martial arts circuit that, that didn't mesh with me anymore. Mm -hmm. And Latin dance was giving me those things that I couldn't get from martial arts anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, because in a sense, like the way martial arts works, like especially traditional martial arts, is that there's no patience for it anymore. People don't want to sit around and, and yeah. learn traditional things. Uh, look at traditional bachata, right? Compared to modern bachata, people don't really want to learn it as much, right? People don't appreciate the music. People don't appreciate the dance itself. So it's like take that analogy to martial arts. Everyone wants to see like mixed martial arts and kickboxing or just true MMA. Like they don't want to. They, they just want to actually be able to just get into a ring real quick and fight. No one cares about the training and the yeah. history and the discipline parts of it, right? So I just you know, kind of weighed out like, you know, that and some other things. And dance is kind of like was coalescing and getting bigger and, and better. And she and I are dancing this team. And I just loved being at Congresses. I loved social dancing. I loved um, performing and teaching. And I was just doing more and more and more of it. And, you know, like anybody else, we were obviously too inexperienced to start it off. But we were good at what we were doing. Like we both understand the human body. Like we, like she has a gymnastics coaching background. Mm. Uh, I have a coaching background from like martial arts. So like I know how to break down a body as well as build a body up. Right between yeah. twenty years of ballet and twenty years or oh, fifteen years of martial arts, and now it's dancing still. Right, this is the knowledge that I have and the ability to teach people. Like people was always like, you know, you should keep teaching. Like you guys are like really, like you guys have a very unique style. Our dancing was different. You know, training with Gordon Neal, like. We don't mm -hmm. dance like many of the people out there. We have a very uh, unique training, I guess, foundation. So like what we bring to this dance is very different. And just people kept saying they liked it. And we just kept feeding off of that. And eventually one day I was like, you know, we're not getting what we need from the company we're on. You know, at one point I think we counted, we traveled at the most like three times in a year. And I'm like, I mm -hmm. want to be on the road like as much as possible, you know? 
Um, so I was like, you know, why don't we just get together and do our own choreography? Like we can stay with them as long as we need to, you know, they're our peeps, they're our friends, but we want to be doing this more, I think, than they did at that point. So let's do our own thing. And that was a decision we came to together and, you know, we went through a lot of different names for ourselves, what we're going to call each other, um, whether or not we're going to try and like do some fake Latino names because, you know, nobody wants to hear Fuquan and Candace, you know. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, we were just like, let's do it. And it's been a struggle, you know, uh, pulling teeth here and there. But at the end of the day, we have a very good product, I feel like, and have created this this nice partnership. And people seem to like what we put out there uh, as social dancers, as teachers, as performers. It's been a nice ride. Absolutely. I mean, and I would say, in a sense, when you talk about Fue Fuego y Yellow, I'm assuming you are the fire and she is the ice. That's what everyone thinks. Oh, and it's okay. The it's the opposite. Is that true, Candace? Yes. I'm okay. Afraid. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's a mixture of different things, right? Like, um, I'm a I'm a talker. Like, I have mm -hmm. to give a grab, but I'm also a very cold person. Like, mm -hmm. like, t like as a person, I just like unless I like you, like. I'm not just going to be like, hey, what's up? I'm like, I might be friendly because I'm from the South. So I have that whole hospitality thing. But at the same time, I'm like, get the fuck away from me. Like, if I don't like you, I'm going to tell you. Like, or just yeah. give you the worst possible faces ever. And just, <laughs> she had to train me for years. We had these congresses, like, sitting in the front row because we love to watch the show. Oh, before. God. I already know and where you go. Like, she's, and she's sitting there hitting me, like, fix your face. I'm sitting yeah. like, in the audience, like, oh, my God, this is horrible. So it's more so, like, I'm a cold person a lot mm -hmm. of times. And... Not only that, that's that's one reason. But the other reason is like, you know, uh, our stage quality, our stage performance quality is different, right? Like she's always super like, ah, and all these huge mm -hmm. faces and moves. And I'm always like the the cool, like, so, you know, uh, stage. And <laughs> so it's like it's very different because I'm never on stage. Like, you know, I'm killing it, but my personality is very like cool, calm and collected. And she's yes. pictures of her with her mouth wide open. <laughs> you know? uh, and you'll never see that same thing from me. So it was like a bunch of different reasons, but she is definitely the fuego to my yellow. Um, oh, even though personality wise, people always think it's different. Yeah. But it's more about our state, our dance selves than our personal selves. Oh, absolutely. Now I definitely appreciate it because for me, it's like when you see the name, you kind of try to attach it somewhere, but mm -hmm. understanding it's kind of in reverse. It definitely speaks volumes. And now understanding, and you said a really important name. For me, even in New York, I started when I was maybe five, six years old dancing, and I've been in the scene ever since, involved in some way. So realizing people like Gordon Neal that I knew about when I was younger, and what I loved about Gordon Neal too is he was known to be very expressive of how he felt about the culture. And that was something even as I was younger, watching interviews of him, and just listening to what he's saying and realizing, especially when it comes to representation. And this helps me now transition into, un into the discussion we also had ourselves along with Lyric on the Bailacura um, panel that we talked about, discrimination in the dance community. And for me, um, it definitely touched me a lot. Um, and hearing your both of your experiences um, it really was something that I really wanted to kind of go a little bit into with our talk because I think people like Gordon Neal, people like uh, yourself and Candace are those voices of the voiceless and realizing that how important it is to talk about it because it's not just discrimination in the real world, there's discrimination everywhere. And then now when it's only different when the people who feel offended are actually speaking up and speaking out, and that's where the lines can get drawn. So for me, it's, I love hearing from both of you about just your overall experience of being dancers in a Latin scene, quote unquote, the black dancers in a Latin dance community in a sense. You know what's really funny, I'll say something quick and I'll let Candace talk is, um, I, we kind of glossed over our stories but um, Gordon is very influential to us still, let alone through a lot of our training. When we were dancing with Proyecto Barrio, he literally approaches at a social one night. He goes, yo, yo, I really dig you guys. Like, he's, he's a really cool guy if he likes you. Like, he can be very personable, but he can also be like me. He can be like, hey, 
get away from me. He speaks his mind very much so like I do. And I think it's a habit I kind of latched on to too much from him and amongst other influences in my life. But um, he was just like, you know, yo, I really want to work with you guys. So a lot of people don't know that he picked up me, Candace, and Stacey Paulin all at the same time to train with him to perform at the Chicago Salsa Congress. Uh, and a lot of our training and what we feel like gave us the next leg up in our dancing was, especially in Latin dancing, was through him. And to this day, we still like he actually lives in our apartment complex, like literally he lives around the corner in our apartment complex because he asks us one day, like, hey, you know, is there any apartments going moving back to Atlanta? You know, like so we have a really close relationship. We talk about a lot, religion, politics, so on and so forth, and then dance. And if we ever have something, an idea, he's like the first person I call, like, you know, hey, I have an idea about this thing. What are your thoughts? We ask him for pieces to come back, check on them, because he's one of the few people to this day that we still trust with the knowledge and experience he has right so he's truly what i say is a mentor for us uh, so that's just a preface uh what we talked about before canon starts with the whole racism and inclusion and all that kind of stuff go ahead Candace. <laughs> um so what up guy sorry what's the question the question is experiences with being black people in the latin dancing racism exclusivity all that kind of stuff it, it, it okay. really, how, should, how should i say more in a sense of from your overall experiences just and your life in this dance community i remember when we had that discussion at baila cura and it was just for me it was something that i wanted to talk deeper and understanding from your overall experience in this community the the topic of being discriminated against or having, as they say, the microaggressions being put onto you of little things people say here and there. Have you been subject or had that experience over time of just those little microaggressions from people in the communities or those just questions people ask of like why or what made you want to become a Latin dancer in a sense? <laughs> yeah, I have. Um, but like I would say like, um, which you use the word micro, like I would mm -hmm. say that's kind of what it has been yeah. probably over time. Like I've never really experienced anything like super overt, mm -hmm. you know, um, in my being booed one time, but in my presence, I don't remember that. Tongue and groove. Okay. I'll tell it um, anyway, <laughs> um, so I think the most common thing that I would get and I still get often would be like if I'm social dancing and I'm dancing with somebody that may not be in the scene like a lot of like a lot of other people to where you know they're taking classes but you know they're just coming to the social mm -hmm. and i find it being although it does happen amongst the younger crowd i find it to happen between ages like 50 and up more mm -hmm. so like if i were to take like you know a tally on the age bracket that has happened on it's been the older men i would say mm -hmm. um and they just go like you know they're like oh you dance so well like you know are you latina like where are you from and i'm just like I'm from North Carolina. It's like, okay. do you, you know, you speak, you Latin, no Latin. And I'm like, no, why you dance? And it's literally those three words, why you dance? And I'm just like, I don't even know how to answer this. It was like, well, you dance so good. Like, how do you dance so good? And it's like, because I learned and I practiced, you know, and it's just like <laughs> that question I just get, that is the most common question. It's just like, they don't understand that because I'm, I have not Latina at all. It's just like, oh, how do you dance so well? Like, how is that even possible? You're like an anomaly because you know how to dance because, oh, you're not Latina, you're just black. And so like, that's what I come across like the most. Um, and then, you know, sometimes, you know, when we go to congresses and stuff, you know, you're standing there trying to, you know, wait for your dance. And then you see all the guys leaning towards the more Latina girls and mm -hmm. they may not, you know, pick you up. And it's like, oh, hi. I'm here. I know how to dance. And, you know, there's like, oh, you start dancing with people. They see you dance. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, she looks like she can roll. You know, mm -hmm. I'm going to, you know, dance with her. Um, but like I said, for me personally, it's been pretty micro as in experiences just kind of, you know, adding up over time. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, basically, that's kind of what I felt the most that's happened per se, at least to my face. Like, things mm -hmm. could have happened behind my back. But I sometimes, you know, things just kind of go over my head. I'm just like, la, la, la. so, you know, I don't mm -hmm. try not to pay too much attention to, you know, any negativity. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of shit I can say. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> micro and macro. Mm -hmm. So 
the the most prevalent thing I can think about off the off the back is that when I asked Gordon about us, you know, doing our own thing, you know, I was asking him our thoughts, any advice he has for us. He goes, "This is like a true story." He goes, "Don't use your actual name." So it's like, what? It's like, mm. don't no Latinos want to see some niggas get on stage named Fuquan and Candace performing? Like, like real mm-hmm. talk. He's like, choose some real Latin sounding, right? And they will love you guys because they'll assume you're Puerto Rican or or, or Cuban <laughs> or something. And I'll just be like, cool, cool, you know, because uh, everyone said the same thing about him, but they don't know him. He's like, oh, he's, he's a black Cuban or he's, you know, a uh, Dominican, you know, they just assume. So we were like, okay, we can't be for Quan and Candace because, you know, most couples don't have that have that talk, right? Like Ernesto and Denise are just Ernesto and Denise. Yes. Um, Alex and Desiree, even though Desiree is black, they're just Alex and Desiree, right? Mm-hmm. Like a lot of these couples at least have at least one person of them who speaks no Spanish or is Latin enough to where they can get away just having their names. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, mm, we don't speak Spanish like that. Mm-mm, we ain't got no. <laughs> we're from Atlanta. We're not from New York either, so we can't blend yeah. in. So we were like, we gotta find a name. So we had we spent a while trying to figure out a name to make, make sure we blend in. And luckily, I feel like our name is dope. Like. I yeah. think everyone loves our branding, like Fuego Yellow. Like, there's like that's a really cool name. I feel like, like, because we've seen some copycats afterwards. Really? I'm like, you know, really. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to name names off. Of no, you no, know. of course, of course. <laughs> like, like, does it does this people anything to do with you? I'm like, nope. Or we see like some fire and ice socials here and there. I'm like, y'all ain't think about a name by yourselves. We've been around oh, so long. <laughs> you <laughs> seen some Fuego like, Yellow socials? Wow. Oh, so, you know. Um, <laughs> So that's the that's the first thing is that that name already is rooted in in how this dance works, right? The culture of of the Latin, I guess. What's the word for it? the that Latin pride for salsa and how they think it's just a Latino thing, even with dance, mm-hmm. like you know, is a African based dance, you know, a dance built by slaves in the Latin Americas, right? Most of these rhythms and movements come from more African than they do from Latino. And then how you define Latino? Is Latino just Taino or Arawak or Mayan or Aztec? Mm-hmm. Or is it the white conquering people who came over here? Is Because that's all it is. It's some kind of Native American, some kind of European, and some kind of Black. That's all there is to Latin America for the most part. That's the racial makeup, right? And mm-hmm. so like, how do you define Latino anyway? So that off the back, like our company name is rooted in the racism of this mm-hmm. you know, world we live in, right? Um, and then secondly, which I find very interesting because it's it, it you wouldn't think about it being an aggression, but like literally, I'm the public face of the company because I'm the one who talks, I'm the one who's always mm-hmm. super active and like like typically after we're done performing, we might both go take a nap before we go to social dancing, but typically I'm up much earlier and I'm like ready to go dance and socialize. And she's like, I'll see you like another hour to go out the rest up. I got <laughs> shower, so I'll see you, but I'll probably see you like one o'clock when I'm down at like mm-hmm. by, by midnight sometimes. Like I'm like, okay. So I'm like hanging out and going to like the after parties. And she's like, hey, she was texting me where you at and she'll come and join me. But even then she'll kind of like sit on the side with a little, yeah. you know, water or whatever while I'm like the one like partying and everything. Mm-hmm. So if we're walking around a social, if she's with me, everyone's like, oh shit, it's Fuquan and Candace, it's Fuego Yellow. But yes. if we're by ourselves and she walks in, no one even like gives her the same kind of time of day. So like some of the mm-hmm. artists that we know or you know know of or they know us through the kind of grapevine or whatever, if they see us together, she'll get all the dances like, oh shit, it's Fuquan's partner, grab her up real quick, grab her up real quick. Because of that, that entity, right? Mm-hmm. She walks into a social by her or to a congress by herself, you know, like the first night of Congress, where we might not be that well known because you know we're still growing artists, we're like big in certain places and not big in other places. So, if it's the mm-hmm. first time in Congress and it's like Friday night, and she walks in by herself, it's just like how she says, she's kind of standing there like the whole time, like I can dance, you know, yeah, standing around the other artists. Can you know how the artists click up around certain Absolutely. areas? Absolutely, we go find that whole artist area and she's kind of <laughs> just standing there. And if somebody recognizes her or if she's a reader near me, she's gonna get right into it. And if not, I've seen it. I've seen her walk into like uh, a, the the room and I've seen her kind of standing off and how they're like, hey, come over here. So we can like yeah. be in the vicinity, right? Um, so that's like, I'm sure that people might not understand where I'm going with that, but the fact that we have to be a famous couple, right? Or have to have just performed to even be recognized, right? Um, that's the the funny thing in my mind is like, you know, it shouldn't have to be that way. She shouldn't have to walk in with me and be recognized as the Fuego Yellow Girl, right? 
because I feel like, and me personally, I pick up any because I look at somebody's body type and how they move more so than I look at like who they are. Like, like yeah, she, she can move. I'm about to ask her to dance real quick, right? Or watch her dance versus just like, nah, she's black. I ain't about to do that to myself. Or nah, she's white. I'm about to do that myself. But that's just me, right? So, but you know, obviously that's not how people's minds work. They have to assume that she's Cuban and assume that I'm yep. Dominican, whatever. And it's really sucks because I literally get calls for our studio right here in Atlanta. I get calls every week. Like at least once a week, but that's like the bare minimum. Several times a week in Spanish. And I speak enough Spanish to have a conversation about my classes, to teach my classes in Spanish. But yeah. having a full on conversation can get limited depending upon mm -hmm. how fast and how ghetto their Spanish is, right? Mm -hmm. And I would get this question like, where are you from? And I'm like, I'm from here. Like, yeah. but where, where are your people from? Like, what do you mean my people? <laughs> like, what country are you from? I'm like, America, man. Yeah. What's the question about? Like, like, so you're like, but are your parents like Puerto Rican or Dominican? Like, no. And then literally all the time. And I, it's funny because it doesn't dawn on them that it's so fucking racist. But like, why are you teaching salsa then? Why are you teaching patata then? Like, and I, sometimes I'll, I'll keep my cool. And I say, well, you know, this dance is around the entire world, you know, and like any of the skill set, all you have to do is study it, you know? Um, but then sometimes I lose my temper because I have a very short temper. And I'm like, so where are you from? They're like, oh, well, I'm from Guatemala. I'm like, okay, so why do you speak English? That's how dumb your question is to me right now. Don't ask me dumb questions. Like, you studied it, you learned it, you have some kind of mastery of it. That's why you're able to talk to me right now. Same mm -hmm. thing here. If you want to learn it, it doesn't matter about where I'm from or where you're from. As long as you find the person that's teaching you a skill or actually has a mastery and understanding of it, it should all be that matters. But literally, Every week, like sometimes people don't speak the phone, like listen to this shit, like listen to what I have to deal with because it's yeah. constant, like constant. Same thing in Congresses. No. Uh, it's my last story. A really, really famous dance company owner, right? Asked this one time, goes, he goes, come here, come here. Like, okay, we come to him. I kind of like, you know, we get that that beckoning. So, okay, okay, we're over <laughs> that beckoning. Goes, Are you guys, you guys Latino? No, like really. No Latino. No, it goes, you guys can dance good. I'm like, thank you. And so, like, it's really weird because it's kind of like the fact that that question to be asked, like, why does it matter that we're Latino? Yeah. Like, but then it's funny because now, like, with certain people who are cool with that person are not cool with us because we've been accepted by that click, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like these weird little entry barriers that we've had to deal with all the time. And people asking questions like, why are your dances so black? Like, why are you doing all this Afro, like... What, why is your piece like this? I'm like, are you listening to the same song we were listening to? Yeah. And, like, and no, no, I, I agree because I, I think especially coming from both of you, for me too, and I've talked to many dancers because for me transitioning from a performer to a videographer to now a public speaker and speaking to artists like yourselves, I definitely feel there's been, especially in, in my opinion, a lack of more representation of of black women in the Latin dancing, especially when people have to understand what we are dancing is also derived from African roots. I think too, it's also, especially when it comes to women, having the, the, the look of how a female should look on stage, the hair texture, the styling. I think for me in the last five years, especially in New York, I can say a lot of women have been focused on breaking that barrier. I'm not sure about everywhere else, but I definitely understand, especially as a videographer, I've been in events that I've seen women of color being left on the side and I'm looking and I'm like, I see what's going on. But just like you said, Candace and Fuquan, when you guys are seen together, then they understand like, oh, we know who they are. But it's, it's more, they don't really get to know who you are. They just see what they see on stage and that's their full representation but then, like you said, having those moments of people asking you these questions just to figure out, is that why you're a good dancer? That That's something to me over the past five, 10 years. I've heard it. I've argued about it. Um, I've lost friendships over mm -hmm. it because people just have no understanding of how rude and inconsiderate and insensitive it can be. Because if, like you said, flip it around. And let's see how you would feel about me. Because I think really in, in totality, no matter, we've realized in this dance scene, there's black, white, Asian, every color, every nationality, creed, whatever you name it, there's a dancer in every city. 
Yeah. And, you know, I think for me, it's very, very important that we have artists like yourselves, because at the end of the day, when people say, where's the representation of people that look like me? There it is. I see it. It's a lot of times when it's not publicized all the time, people are ignorant to it. And I tell people, it's okay to be ignorant. But once you learn, then you have to educate yourself, educate yourself further to be more knowledgeable. And again, I think to, as well, Fuquan, hearing you saying how you're just honest. It's not about being rude or people just have an assumption how you are. You're just giving them the same energy they're giving you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the one thing I'll say I can deal with with New York people. Like, no offense. No, like, absolutely. Kind of like, New York people, because it's typically rude. I try not to be rude at first. Mm -hmm. But, like, sometimes I have to just give you back what you're giving me. And so, like, some another another common thing I say all the time, like, people are like, so why are you teaching dance? I'm like, okay, well, you're Puerto Rican, right? Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Why can't you dance? Thank you. You're the one calling <laughs> me. You're the one on Google looking up salsa schools. So mm -hmm. obviously your logic is flawed. Like obviously the, the thought process that salsa is in our blood is a flawed thought process because yeah. it, obviously every single person from Latin America should be dancing salsa to a magical <laughs> level. That's the case, you know. But it's not the case, right? Yeah. Um. So you know, it's it's crazy, man. Like it's it's unfortunate because we would ask this question forever ago. Like when these talks first started, started kind of happening, everybody was asking us to do all these um these panels and stuff. The question came up like, you know, can you think of black dancers and like, especially black couples? I think we're some of the rare like mm -hmm. black couples out there actually doing something like, yeah. coming thinking, like bigger than us, like Alex and Desiree. Mm -hmm. um, and technically, you know, Alex is, you know, Latino himself. So it's not like a true, like just black, black. He's obviously Afro Latino, but yeah. You know. And then you have Terry and Cecile, yeah. like those are the big famous black couples. There aren't any other real famous black couples. And it's unfortunate because it's like people ask all the time, like, where's your position? Because there's a lot of Afro-Latinas who either mm -hmm. identify as Afro or not. You know, that's a whole different story. But if they don't identify, they're not giving that sense of representation, right? Like yes. they're not for the culture of, you know, they're not doing it for the culture. They're doing it for themselves. So mm -hmm. and it's unfortunate because we didn't have a lot of um, inspiration growing up. But luckily, you know, we were able to find our mentors because we look up to the other black dancers like Gordon, Sekou, you yeah, know. Yeah, Sekou McMillan, uh, absolutely. Yeah, Leon Rose. Like, we actually, mm -hmm. like, you know, became friends with these people. And whenever we see them, try to, like, get as much from them as we can. Like, we're constantly, like, whenever we see Sekou, it's like, hey, let's go get some dinner real quick. Let's go talk. Let's, like, make some stuff happen, you know. Mm -hmm. He'll sit down with us and tell us. Same thing. Like, we have, like, a, a very slight mentorship because he's obviously further away from us than Gordon is. But like last year, the New York Salsa Congress, like, you know, we were like, hey, we're both in town. Like, let's go some dinner. We spent like a yeah. whole, like, it was like four or five hours. We went and walked way uptown. Uh, we went to Central Park together. We found some acrobats and we ended up hanging out with some acrobats, like the three of us. Like, we did a bunch of videos of them and he was just like, you know, it was just random. And then we ended up coming back to the hotel and like, you know, hey, he hung out in the hotel room with us for a while. Like, it was a whole thing. Like, and so he's spent the night at my house before. Like, you know, so mm. we tried to latch on to people because for one thing a lot of people we latch on to happen to be great mentors right but they also happen to be of like minds they try to actually do it for the culture and are they're the ones who are pushing the art in a different light you know so they're doing the same old mm -hmm. combo routines and the same old salsa routines and the same music they're the ones branching off and doing Afro Latin fusion and doing and finding songs that people haven't actually performed to. And, <laughs> you know, so like it's great to have those people out there who are available to feel than they are. Being from New York, we tend to be point blank. I mean, yeah, but yeah. I, I'm the wrong person. Oh, yeah. I'm supposed to be rude to. Like for real. <laughs> I, what was it? Two years ago, we're at the big salsa festival in New York, and we took our whole company with us, right? Yeah. And we went out and got some food one night. We went to somewhere stupid like a Chili's, like just because it was just like, hey, let's find a place that we can yeah. all go. <laughs> I'm gonna pull up the hotel, and literally, I I said, you know, to this to the waitress, hey, can I have a menu? That da, 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 da. I make my order. I say, thank you, ma'am. She goes, don't call me, ma'am. It's like, <sighs> what are you doing, bitch? Like I was just so <laughs> <laughs> I, like I was the wrong person for her because. I'm taught from a young age, yes. no sir, no, yes. uh, no ma'am, yes sir, yes ma'am, um, yep. comfortable madam all the time, right? So how is it hurting you? It's like, I don't want to be considered, oh, bitch, it's me being polite. Like, yeah. what? <laughs> so like that, 
idea, like I just can't do it. So I'm the wrong person to come to with the wrong energy because I'll give it right back, like tenfold. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think too, I, I can really honestly say from my experience, from my journey in dance, from hearing your stories and many others, I think too, what happens when it comes to the representation of black and people who consider themselves black artists in a sense, I think it is what happens is the reluctancy to stay in a scene that you're constantly questioned about why you're in it. And for some people, they're able to last through the ridicule and they're able to make a path for themselves. But for many, they question the validity of what they do because they're constantly questioned on why they do it. It's rough, man. Um, I know for me, I think more so than her because she gets a different outlet. She mm -hmm. has a gymnastics, right? Uh, we have our child which puts a lot of her energy into, but like for me, it's all day dance. Like I'm in private lessons throughout the day and then I go to classes at night and then I have rehearsals after that. So it's like all different. I'm the one who does all the business stuff. So like I'm the one that promoters call to deal with about, you know, setting up dates and so on and so forth. And so I get the brunt of it and I'll tell her stories, but typically it's like just all on me. And it's unfortunate because I'm trying to make the transitions a better, more patient and kind person for it because I'm to the point where I'm like, fuck everything you heard about me. Like, I think I'm big enough now to be able to tell you what I think about you in your event because I don't really need your money that much. Uh, mm -hmm. So don't make something rude to me. Because um, people, like, what's, what's a good example? You know what? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say this story because I don't want to mouth. But I just you know I feel like I give good energy. If you give me good energy, let's work together. Mm -hmm. Let's stuff happen. I want to work like we do the most. Like it's been plenty of events we've gone to. I'm um, like we were at Bacha too one year, uh, the Island Touch event that was down in DR. Yes, and one of the I've been artists, there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good event. One of the artists didn't show up for his class. Like he his flight didn't make it, and so we volunteered to teach a class for them. Right. Like we're always like game, like we're team players. We're always like that. Like we love actual, actual jobs. Other people like do it for like the fame or do it for the money. We love dancing. We like so we're some of the few artists that like we're downstairs dancing all night. Like unless we have an mm -hmm. early set, we're downstairs dancing until the social dance floor has cleared. Like mm -hmm. we'll go to Orlando out to talk in the morning sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. Then go to the after party. Then we got to get up and wake up and get prepared for our class the next day. Like we're, <laughs> we're on time for our classes. Mm -hmm. um, we always perform to the best of our abilities on stage, right? Um, you know, plenty of standing ovations. So for anyone to ever come in my face and question the validity of my training technique or rights to be in this dance, yeah, or why am I dancing with her? Like, why don't I have a white partner? I had mm -hmm. questions. Why don't I have someone who looks different? Like, I'm like, oh, why are we doing so much Afro stuff? I'm like, who are you? Like, yeah. who are you to me? Like, and I hate to be that person because it sounds egotistic. It was like, I've worked too hard. She's worked too hard. We've yeah. worked hard to deal with the bullshit. And I, I'm to that point where I'm like, if you say something stupid to me, whether you're an event organizer or a social dancer or whoever, mm -hmm. I might have to just play into you and tell you how I really feel about you um, and hurt your feelings along the way. Like, I just... In that yeah. respect, I can I can understand what it's like to be a New Yorker because I'm so rude sometimes. Like I just I, <laughs> I, I appreciate it. I, I definitely appreciate like, that. Stop it. Stop it. Like I, I appreciate the honesty. Um, because that's honestly how our world really works. I think sometimes people are so naive and feel that everything should happen in our favor and everything should go right and everyone should accept everyone. But it's really not like that. But it's also people like yourselves that are pushing that envelope and that limit and that barrier of saying, no, we're going to speak up and we're going to let you know, like, hey, what you're saying is offensive, but also if you're going to question why I do this, I'm also going to do the same in return because, again, it's about questioning and understanding one another. And I think now it helps me transition into a segment that I call the randoms, which is kind of, <laughs> I love doing it because it, it allows me to understand the artists that I talk to but also the audience can understand the artists and a little bit more about them, but also at a faster uh, rate. So um, I have about here 10 questions, about five to 10 seconds each for each person uh, to answer. <laughs> um, and these questions, some of them are a little, you know, can be a little, makes you think a bit. Um, some of them are really pretty easy, but uh, just let me know when you guys are ready. I think we're ready. I see, right. I see guys, guys comment, guy says, nah, I want to hear that story. Guy, 
I, I, I still want to have my career when COVID's over, man. So I think yep. <laughs> I, I, I might give a different story later. I'll give you a different story later. Absolutely. And so first question will be, what is your favorite food? Go. <laughs> so I'm really lame. When people ask me my favorites, I hate to give favorites because it, it feels like it limits me. So mm-hmm. I don't have a favorite thing. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a chef too. I don't know if you know okay. this. I uh, have a cooking show like on YouTube. So okay. like, I feel like that's the worst thing to do to a chef, especially as I say, what's your favorite food? I'm like, all food's my favorite food. Mm. My favorite food is bread. Carbs. Okay. Carbs, are nice. <laughs> Carbs are really good. The go-to yeah. carb. Okay, I like that. <laughs> Next would be, what is your favorite workout song? Or if I can say, if you don't work out as much, many people have told me, your go-to dance song on the dance floor. Like that song that once you hear it, I don't care who's around me. I need to pick them up and we need to go on the dance floor. Is it, is it still the same song for you? No, probably not. What? The, um, dang, I can't think of it. Yeah. No, the, the famous song. The famous song. Yep. The famous song. Mm-hmm. What's it sound like? So the Candace does not know like song names at all or like, <laughs> um, oh, what are they? Yeah, yeah. What are they for Candace? What okay. are they? It um, changes though throughout the years. It I doesn't mean, <laughs> That's perfect. For me, I I love when a good like Afro-Cuban song comes on. Like not, oh, not Afro-Cuban song, but like a timba or Cuban Mm-hmm. Salsa song, like those have a different level of hype for me. Like I'm, I love mambo, I love Latin jazz. But I feel like if I'm in a social, in a social or Congress, yeah, you know, like Azucar comes on, like oh shit, it's something to dance. Like that's my, mm. Mm, that or just cha cha. Like um, love, like we both are very big advocates of cha cha, and we're really sad that it doesn't get taught or played as much in socials or Congress. Yes, here. but like when cha cha comes on, literally, I do not dance with anyone like the only person i dance with in atlanta is her or stacy like i'll be like oh i'm sitting down sorry i'm good i really no 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 i'm good because it's just a waste of dance for me like it's like having really bad sex on purpose who wants to do that so <laughs> um that's that's it for me like you know it's in the king of congress i'll be looking around like trying to find like does she have a dance already okay well i'll try to find somebody i guess but i'd rather just sit down on the stage and watch than ever like have a bad cha-cha like it's mm. the worst thing ever so yeah. Okay. Next one would be your go-to Congress. Oh, win. Go-to Congress. Ooh. One. I would like just if you had your mind, <laughs> if you can go to just one specific one. What do you think that would be? If you could have it right now, like coming up this weekend, oh my God, like no. there wasn't any COVID going around. This is like this one event. C I S C the Chicago International mm. Stop Conference. Yeah. Like I agree. um besides at the very base of it, Rosita and Saladin are just great people and run a yeah. great it, and it's such a warm, welcoming family. Our first year there was with Gordon forever ago. And I mean literally we're walking around and we're going to like the artist meals and Gordon's introducing, he's like, Hey, this is Candace and this is Fukuwa, my Arab ninja friend. Um, and like, they're all like, okay, what's up for Kwan and Candace? I guess you're the Arab ninja. Okay, how was up, Candace? And like, they accepted us in it immediately. And we've been to Chicago pretty much every year, almost except for maybe one or, one or two years since then. And they're always so welcoming to us, like, hey, you know, let's get you guys in here. What do you want to teach? Da, 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 da. Then the social dance is always bomb, the performances mm. are always dope, the classes are great. Like, just it's the worst thing about Chicago, the worst thing it's is cold. In weather, like I can't, <laughs> I can't tell you, we both hate cold. So getting to a place where we're constantly like in a thousand layers, trying not to die, and can't leave the hotel to find food because it's that cold, it's, it's the worst. But past that, we love Chicago. I don't know if you have another answer besides that. No. All right. I, I, I like multiple congresses. Just throwing it out there. I, I, not a problem at all. <laughs> next like, one would be. <laughs> the next one would be. What would be your spirit animal? Oof. Interesting. I think someone's told me once that I that I was like an eagle with the head of a bear at one point. Like I asked somebody this question, like, "What animal? If I you see an animal, what would you see?" And they're like, "Yeah, I think it'd be like the 
like a giant eagle with a bare head. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? Um, <laughs> but I think for me, what I see myself as is like some kind of cat, like a big, like a, like a leopard or a panther. Like, like that's what I kind of feel like I would be. Like, I get to sleep all all day, hunt and fuck at night. Like, yeah. You know, my women bring me food, like, <laughs> nice life. you know, just hanging out in trees and shit. Like, I can run really fast, you know, I'm built powerfully. Nobody wants to fuck with me. You know, like, that's a nice life, you know? Yeah. What probably about a you, lab. Kid? So probably a lab? A lab. Like a yeah. Labrador retriever? Yeah. Okay. Got the little lassie <laughs> thing going on. I feel you. <laughs> next one would be, because this one, this next question gets people a lot. And I had this conversation with Carlos Cinta. I know he's going to get mad at me when I ask this. Uh, would you prefer either partner work or footwork? Partner work. Partner work. Okay. Partner work. But mm. Partner work. <laughs> it serves different purposes, mm-hmm. right? For me, it's, it, especially. like um, Partner work is easier for me to get through with anybody, no matter their yeah. level. And so say like it's very rare. Like I had this one experience that like sent on my mind at Nick's Motion. I think it was our first year there. Um, I'm walking into the the the, the main. The, it's only one room. There's like yeah. the main. Room. And I'm walking in there, and I'm standing off on the side, and this song comes on. It's like a, a team bus song, but it's like it has an Afro intro. And I'm just kind of sitting there, dancing by myself in a corner, right? And this girl comes up to me, and she starts dancing with me too, like this. Yeah. Walk. Like we're dancing all corner together. I'm like, and it was so organic and natural. Like we we're both feeling the music, feeling each other. And for like, it was like a literally a three minute intro of us just dancing right before the song broke. And that experience is so rare for someone to actually understand music and to be able to give yeah. something from it besides partner work. Mm-hmm. That's why I would choose partner work because people have a better understanding and grasp of it. And I can do more of it with anyone than yeah. saying footwork with just anybody. Right, mm-hmm. so that's my reasoning behind it. Okay, I like that. Both of it is partner work. The next one would be, what would be your superpower? Mm, I think teleportation. All right. And what would yours be? She stole mine. Like, it was literally what I had my <laughs> I have two answers. My first answer might be my mind reading. I think it'll be really cool to be able to read people's minds. No. Oh, at, at a Congress? Oh, that, that's going to be in general, like, I have, I have control over it. So, like, so I'll be like, okay, what's your ATM pin? Like, okay, cool. <laughs> right? Um, so, that or, to be honest, I'd just be Batman. I don't need any power. Just give me okay. a million dollars, I'd be Batman. All right. I like that. All right, next one would be, and this one definitely gets the people. What are three? Who are three people for each of you that are most influential to you at this point in your life? I'm gonna let her go first. <laughs> <laughs> at this point, meaning like right now, or can it be throughout our lives in general? Oh my, yeah, throughout your lives, of course. Okay. Hmm. My mother, Fuquan. Okay. And my best friends who have changed throughout the years. (laughs) So I've had like multiple best friends growing up. Um, So that person at that time was probably influential. And then as it changed, that person was like my Mm -hmm. main person. So like, all of my multiple best friends have like, um, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Um, for me, the first person we have to be my grandmother who has passed away um, a few years ago. <laughs> Damn, it got quiet, I don't want to tough question. Um, <laughs> she was the reason I was in dance in the first place. You know, she mm. put me in all the arts. So like, I actually, I'm actually a model and photographer as well. Like she yes, all you this are. Stuff. So like my entire life is. We all seen the baby powder. We all yeah, I seen the baby powder hitting. I mean, from all sides. So, uh, <laughs> yo, I had some really fancy pictures down over the years. People were like, "Is that your dick?" Um, so <laughs> you just Michelangelo up. out there. You just hitting it. You just. <laughs> I'm, you know, I just. I truly have a love for life, and I love 
like, like for instance, COVID has been really hard on me because yeah. I hate being in the house. Like I hate not doing, like I'm such an active person. Mm -hmm. I'm up all day. I don't sleep much. So I'm always active. I'm always going to do things. So like this being stuck in the house or like not being able to go out and do stuff has been killing me. So, but yeah, my grandmother's the most influential person in my life because everything I do has pretty much been predicated by her existence, like everything. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, hmm, to be honest, Gordon's like a really big mm -hmm. second. Like that man, I honestly have him in the back of my head through like most of like my Latin dance career. Like, nah, nigga, don't do this. Oh yeah, yeah. no, that's cool. Or like, I'm always kind of like looking at him like, do I have your approval to do this? Like, like master, like, and so the fact that he kind of like looks at us as like peers now, like we'll have conversations like, Yo, man, you ain't gonna ask me for this thing. Like, y'all doing good work. I'm like, excuse me? Like, no, I need you to tell me right now what's wrong with this. So that's my second and my third. Oh my God. Let's see here. Maybe Sekou. Sekou's Ooh. like Gordon, Gordon's like my my, I don't know, like my my more devilish voice on the side of my head. Like mm. fuck them niggas. And then Sekou. <laughs> like, like, you know, like, no, it's okay. Earth, yeah, Earth. I know exactly. <laughs> Just love everybody, you know. So like, yeah. I have to kind of balance because they give me wildly different advice sometimes. Like, go to be like, no nah, man, don't do that Congress thing about nothing. They do the same wax up every year. Sick was like, you know, there might be a chance you to get to another audience to see what's going on. You know, like, just, yeah. it's okay. So, so like, I have them. I think both in my head oftentimes, like, because they balance each other out so much, even though they're so similar. Mm -hmm. All so, right, yeah. that's awesome. And then. The next, the last two questions will be, or the next question is, what is a special talent that many people probably don't know about you? Um, I think that I am a pretty good teacher of knowledge that mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> okay. Um, I think I have a good way of saying the same thing multiple mm -hmm. different ways and breaking it down to show you whether it's visually or um, verbally or, you know, just taking it. And I break it down to like coaching kids, you know, because especially children at a younger age, it's very hard to get them to do what you need to do. So you have to figure out a way to say the same thing that you're trying to tell somebody. You can probably just say at another person. You have to try to get them to do a different thing or say something a different way or do it a different way or get them to do this like a thousand different ways just to figure out how you can get that, you know, the child to understand. So I think I've used that ability to just be able to teach anything that I know I can teach. <laughs> I think I can teach that very well. Okay. I'll brag on her some more too. She is right. Candace is the head gymnastics coach of her facility and she has mm. been for like nine years. She runs the program and she gets these girls or the competitions all year long. So it's not this people are like, oh, you're a gymnastics coach, that's cute. No, 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 no. She <laughs> runs like literally, it's the owner of the actual gym. Yeah. And it's her. And he <laughs> defers to her on anything knowledge based in that entire place. He's really just the administrator who pays the checks. And she, <laughs> like literally she schedules everyone out. She does all like, no, you're gonna be doing this, this, that, and the other. She does all the coaches that she be doing. She mm -hmm. runs these Negroes, like that, <laughs> she, because over the years, I noticed like, okay, when you when you're explaining these people, don't say it this way. She's like, oh, you know, I coach gymnastics. How she always says it, I coach gymnastics. I'm like, yep. no, 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 no. You are the head coach of a gymnastics program. That's very different. Like, you start saying, oh yeah, I work at a restaurant. No, I own a restaurant. That's a very different kind of thing to say to mm -hmm. somebody. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, for me. A skill set. Um, what skill set should I say? <laughs> I'm a great. I have. I, I'm. A, I'm just so. Amazing. I'm just so amazing. Uh, I'm a <laughs> wonderful cook. Like I'm. A, I'm an exceptional cook. I cook everything. Um, hey, that's for a my, good one. My, for my okay. family, like, and I recently, because of COVID, started a cooking show. Mm -hmm. I got really bad at it because I haven't like been updating it lately. But typically, I try to like every week or every other week put a new show out. Okay. Um, I speak several languages and learn languages really quickly. I'm a writer. Um, I did Kung Fu for 15 years so I can kill people easily, fairly there so. You, <laughs> um, you know, a lot of things. But it's just it's just time, man. Like, I feel like mm. no one has a real skill set if they don't work at it, you know? so Absolutely. And, that, I mean, that's, that's awesome to hear because I, I myself, I, 
I do cook myself, so I definitely understand, especially through COVID, you're able to just make tons of recipes and it can get really crazy. But I mean, I'm glad <laughs> at least to know with your gymnastics background, Candace, and then your Kung Fu background, you know, you guys just have a very good correlation and collaboration together. And the last question would be, if you were on an island, what are three things that you would have to have with you? That was on an island. And we're not talking about like Tulum. We're talking about Castaway. We're talking about like. <laughs> <laughs> Three things I have on an island. Books. Okay. Outside of like food and stuff, <laughs> like you're, absolutely. I mean, like just stuff that you know. I need three things right now. I have to have them with me. And I mean, even Mike Bayo here saying uh, toilet paper. I mean, that usually is a, <laughs> a go to. Yeah, because the ocean's there, so I can always just take a squat real quick and run to the ocean and wash my ass. I'm, you got you know, a bidet right I, there for you. I don't want to waste the toilet paper, you know. Because <laughs> okay. anyways, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm getting way too analytical. Um, <laughs> I want some kind of multi-tool. That yes. way I can like hunt and fish and create stuff to live on the island with. So like maybe some kind of like multi-tool axe thing. Because mm -hmm. they make those, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. A male. A male? A male. Like a, a human male. <laughs> a human male. Yes. Oh, a male. Oh, a, a man. <laughs> okay, okay. A man. <laughs> I was like, yep. wait. Okay, okay. And then wait, that's... I heard was the first one you said, then you said male. Was Book, there a third? Okay, the books, male. the male, and it was anything else? What's the third one? A, at least a tent that will keep out the bugs. Okay, very good. So for, for Quan, I'm hoping yours is similar, but it seems like it might just go way uh, left. <laughs> Multi tool to help me survive. You know I'm gonna cheat and say a cell phone so I can call and get help. But yeah, no, but, but if you get the cell phone, you need the charger. And you need sure. to wear the plug, you're gonna where you gonna plug. Okay, let's not say let's not say cell phone. <laughs> oh, shit. Of uh, some kind of igniter, like a fire. Uh, yeah, the like, flint, the flint, a, light, a flint. Yeah, yeah or a yeah. fire um, to make fire. I'll get really good with the sticks. <laughs> yeah, it, it takes forever. It takes like an hour. Um, and somebody to talk to, or somebody to be with. I'll say the opposite of her. I need a woman there with me in Ireland. But other gotcha. things are sex, and that's what she literally went with that one. Yeah, straight. gotcha. <laughs> Like all these hunting and moving trees and all this hard work, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a lady. I can, I can work out, but I mean, it would be nice to have uh, some manpower. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I definitely don't blame you. And, you know, I'm glad. Sex would be good too, but you know, it would be nice <laughs> to have somebody that can help me out with lifting and stuff. Nah, definitely. Absolutely. And, and honestly, I'm glad that we could do this little quick segment because it did help me get to know a little more about you both in a shorter amount of time. And, and now we kind of can transition into really the present and understanding, you know, especially through COVID and realizing that it kind of just took the U.S. especially, just especially our dance community, it kind of just wiped it out and made us really, for some start, fresh. And for us, you know, you've seen in the last few months, restrictions have been lifted. But overall, I really wanted to know from, from both of you, how you've been able to adapt uh, through this time? You know what? Luckily, um, I was already making investments. Like I had this huge camera set up mm -hmm. um, before COVID happened because we were planning on like recording our own like online series to uh, be out there because we always get these questions like, oh yeah, when are you going to be in Italy or when are you going to be in China? I'm like, you know, I'm not just going to fly out to China. Like when the promoter brings us out there, we'll be out there until that time. I don't know what to tell you, right? We have some videos on YouTube, right? Yeah. So we're planning on doing like online series already. So look, I already bought this, you know, this Sony A7 III and like mic set up and a, a cam link and all the stuff, my new MacBook Pro, like all the stuff I got pre-COVID. So when it hit, we were able to switch over to online, even though it wasn't as successful because no one wants to do online stuff, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which is unfortunate because I feel like it was very short-minded of our scene in general because it's the same thing I hear from everyone else. Like, 
no one wants to do online, but you have to be able to support these artists so they can last until you get back in the studio, right? Because some people can't afford to wait three, four, five, however many months, maybe even a year to get back in the studio to make money again, right? So you have all these studios closing down now, all these artists are getting regular jobs again. Um, and luckily, luckily we've been able to actually uh, keep everything going between our teams and um, us going to online. What it definitely sucks because we haven't been to a Congress since uh, the Atlanta Salsa Chata Festival in March. Like that was like mm. uh, first week in March. So it's been eight months now of not really like doing what we love. Like it's our job, but it's actually what we love too. Um, having to be on top of our teams because we still have rehearsals with our teams, uh, our full company. And having to be like, uh, did motivation. You, go out, you, did you go out of town this yeah. weekend? Like, okay, you're quarantined now for like two or three weeks. That's come back, it. come back later. Yeah. Uh, is that a snipple out here? Okay, you're quarantined for like two or three weeks. Come back later. <laughs> but like, you know, trying to be safe about us and then motivation because, like, you know, we're learning these choreographies, they're training choreographies with no real date in mind for when they're going to mm-hmm. perform it, you yeah. know? Um, so there's all these ups and downs. How do we keep people motivated? How do we keep people uh, wanting to train with us when there's no uh, hard, you know, on date saying we're going to be performing here at this time as usual? Um, it's just a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, our own motivation, you know, it's, you know, we've luckily for us, COVID gave us time because we were both dancing on broke bodies. Like, tell them about all your stuff. Your broke <laughs> bodies. Basically, yeah, I, I broke my toe back in. December or November, but we still had Congresses. Like we were getting ready for Chicago and other stuff. So yeah. it was like, you know, I just gotta push through it. And I've tore my shoulder and a few other things. Um, so, you know, it's just, it was nice to actually have a, have a little break to heal. Um, because I was, you know, it's, it's hard when your body is injured. Yeah. So, and, but you have gigs coming up. So it's just like, you know, what do you do? You say no. Or you you know you push through it. So I mean, at one point we debuted our new piece in January, and I literally was walking from the green room to the actual room we perform in, hobbling because one of my toes is broken and the other toe is jammed so bad that the mm. actual toenail is black. So I mean, wow. I'm like limping to perform, and then literally it's, it's, our piece is like three and a half minutes long of nothing but Afro contemporary and tricks like. And so at one point, I literally had her over my head. I'm like, oh, my God, my feet are on fire. Keep smiling. Ah, like it's so luckily one of my feet have healed completely. My wrist is now better. I think my at one point I had both my shoulders torn. So like it's all these injuries that we're slowly like finally healing over. But it's like at what cost? Because we missed the dancing so much. Yeah. That and the, the money. I miss the money too. It's, 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 <laughs> you know, like you know, like this yeah. is not, it's not like I'm a dancer by day and it's all settled by night. I'm just a dancer. So like if I don't mm-hmm. get gigs, like we ain't getting paid, right? So it's like yeah. oh, we gotta make these uh adult decisions now. So how are we gonna pay the rent and how are we gonna buy food and so on and so forth. So it's it's intense, man. But I feel we don't have it as bad as some other people, so yeah, obviously we're blessed. Um Georgia being a red state, they were real quick saying, let's reopen. So we were like, <laughs> teaching somewhat in the studio again, and classes are slowly building up again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so in certain ways, it's, it's helped us, certain ways it's hurt us. Um, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's just to hear, especially from both of your experiences, realizing that still you were able to adapt, even through a really dire situation, and not just New York, but really the, the the world has had to deal with. But like yourself and many other instructors and studio owners, you're able to adapt and still keep your business afloat because we've seen in the past few months, a lot of dance studios are no longer around. A lot of small businesses are no longer around, even franchises. So realizing that people like yourselves can still keep your business alive and floating and having the people wanting more from you, that really speaks volumes because it's really the, the content that you're pushing forward, no matter how consistent it will be, no matter what people are watching. And if they're tuned in and they really love what they see, they're going to have an interest, whether it be online or in person. Or like you said, with your cooking, your cooking show, as, as you call it, for fuck's sake. So, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I'll tell you this, and I hope in the future we can all meet because... As you say, you have the best steak dinner, and I'm going to challenge you to that. Hopefully, when I see it. 
<laughs> you don't want, you don't want none of this, huh? <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna cook Whoa. myself. So I mean, I'm looking at episodes one and all of them. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm right. Out. I'm researching it, so I've been seeing it. I got some stuff, man. I got I got waiting to come out. You know what's been honest? To be honest, COVID has not as COVID. COVID <laughs> and race in this country has really like dampened me. Like I, I'm a very big person. Um, like I, I I feed off energy. Like I'm an empath. I need energy around me. I need things to inspire me. Right. Um, it's one of the main reasons we started this company because we wanted to travel and be able to take classes and perform and keep our inspiration as dance going, right? So, like for a while, I was like super gung ho. I was putting um, putting out content every week, and then literally George Floyd was killed, mm -hmm. and literally I was out of commission for like three weeks. Like I just I wasn't the same person. I was yeah. going through stuff in my head. Uh, you know, I'm raising a little black child, a black. Mm -hmm. Muslim Arab child in this in this country that's so actively and openly racist. Yep. And you know, I've been having conversations with him and he's he wasn't even seven at this point. Had to think of myself as a you know person that has so many things that are going against him in this country. It's really hurt because I'm like, I'm always like, I, you know what, I don't have the motivation to do this this week, you know, like yeah, because I'm not a person like I don't get motivated by like likes and descriptions. Like I didn't really honestly put out the show because I like the video editing, I like yeah. video. I like the cooking. Like I do it really for myself as an outlet. The likes and subscriptions are only like a plus, but it doesn't really motivate me to keep like putting out content. Like people are like, oh, I'm just mm -hmm. do it with the gram. I'm not that person. I grew up before social media was a thing, yep. so I'm like, I'm not so motivated by it. So like, I hate that I have to put out more content, but I just have so little motivation sometimes. Like, oh my god, I gotta wash these dishes, and I gotta clean up this kitchen and make it look good. I gotta get my camera settings right. I gotta. Uh, I gotta do this with my son. I gotta get ready for classes tonight. I gotta get ready for rehearsal tonight. Like there's so much going on on top of my mental state, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks, Mike. And then yeah, like I had this group on Facebook, this um, uh, equality for all group on Facebook. Yeah, progressive I, equality for all. Yeah. Yeah. Especially. I try and get people together to actually understand how much is going on with systematic racism and injustice yeah. in the political state of this country, out the world, where the country articles from all over. And I mean, that is a toll. Like seeing another video of another Trumper yeah. caught my face, you know? Um, <laughs> I went to Waffle House today, literally. And waiting in Waffle House behind me was a woman who had uh, a shirt on that said, Women for Kemp. Her hat said something about Trump, and then she had a Trump bracelet on. And I just like, I'm sitting next to her, like, I'm just waiting on something to, to pop off. Like, I really want you to say something to me because I'm like, I don't have to talk for right now. Like, I really don't. And I'm just like, so it's just unfortunately, uh, I just kind of played into my creativity and my want to do stuff. But I'm trying to get back on stuff. Trying to get my show back going on. Okay. Trying to put stuff out every week. I got a lot of stuff going on in here, but hopefully, uh, absolutely. I mean, and for me and myself, I've been an admirer, but also I really admire you both because, again, the Fuego Yellow name sticks and it works so well. Because I like you said, both of you, or it's really in reverse how Candace is Fuego and you're Yellow, but. There's ways that you can like really reverse it in a sense. And like you said, you guys have different personalities, but still are able to come together and when you're dancing, create an amazing product. And yeah. I think you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and for me as well, um, definitely over the past few months, with having this podcast, it's allowed me to talk to artists like yourselves and get to know you more because I think that's so much more important because people see you on stage. But hearing what we've been able to talk about the past hour is so informative and so needed. And I, many of the people who have commented understand and have the same exact sentiment. And really, it's about just having conversation, having yeah. a comfortable conversation without bias or judgment. Even myself, when it comes to politics, I consider myself a progressive liberal. I am a Democrat. But at the same time... I've had instances where people on my podcast are Republican, pro-Trump, and I have to understand from my experience in the military of having just no emotion towards it, allow the person to speak, even when sometimes it sounds like bullshit. I mean, I'm going to just listen because, again, too, like you said, with your experience in Kung Fu, when you learn certain things of when it comes to, unfortunately, violence, you learn certain tips that many other people do not know. In the military, we've learned stuff that civilian world people will never know. And there's experiences we've gone through. But I think over the over time, the experiences that yourself and Candace have gone through 
have just made you better people. Um, and for me, I've been thankful that I get to really connect with you both uh, because I believe, too, people can't tell me there isn't representation of black artists in our Latin dance scene because you two are prime examples as well as, well as many other people with the Leon Roses, um, with the Terrys, with the Gordon Neals, with the Sekou's, uh, with the Desirees. I mean, the list does go on, but it's really up to people to research it. So for me, I've really been thankful. Yes, absolutely. And yes, and for me, I think, you know, it's been awesome that we've had this time to really dialogue, you know, and at least too, I'm glad that through this whole conversation, I was able to learn a lot more about the both of you. And I definitely hope, you know, later on when things are a lot better, we can really connect and unite. Because for me as a videographer myself, I would love to come to Atlanta and work with people like you guys and film classes for you. Let's Absolutely. You know, but, you know, I've been really thankful that we could have this time to understand each other because like, you know, talking to Candace as well, she might seem quiet, but she has so much to say and I appreciate it. And Fuquan, I know you love to talk, but you know what you're talking about. That's the difference. It's really people can <laughs> <laughs> when you know what you're talking about, everything else makes sense. But I've been really thankful to have you on tonight, you know, and at least before we do go, if you have any last words for myself in the audience and also contact information on where they or myself in the audience can reach you. Any last words? Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> um, I feel like the important thing is we're open books. Um, I know I can be standoffish and so she can be quiet or sometimes you catch me in the right mood, I'm in a good mood and I'm just, hey, how's it going? But in general, you're always welcome to hit us up about anything. If you wanna make a project happen, whatever kind of project it is, Hit us up. We, we're more than open to talking. Our business number is my personal number. So it's not like you have to like dial a business number that's closed at certain hours. Like I answer my phone all throughout the day and the night. Don't call me like super late and be that person. <laughs> I answer my phone often, right? Because it's my business phone too. Um, so yeah, no, like if you have any questions about who we are, anybody else wants to talk to us, like this could have gone on another hour or two. There's plenty else to our lives, you know, we could yeah. talk about. Um, but if you want to follow us, you can go to our website, which is simply FuegoYellow.com. All of our social media is some version of Fuego Yellow. So on Facebook, it's Fuego Yellow Dance Company. Instagram is Fuego Yellow Dance. Twitter is Fuego Yellow. Uh, YouTube, Fuego Yellow Dance Company. Mm -hmm. So like anywhere you type in Fuego Yellow, you will find us. Um, I think we're almost to the point to where we've almost taken over the hashtag Fuego Yellow. Yeah. Um, but sometimes like Game of Thrones comes up instead. <laughs> Um, but like, we're like, there's not a lot of else out there to be fire and ice. So, um, yeah, yeah. Feel free to follow us. We, we love, we do this for the actual love of the dance and the music. Um, and I feel like it's a very big rarity. We're not doing it. Like obviously being famous and getting paid for this is a, is a nice perk because it helps us live our lives. But for us, we truly do like have an appreciation for the music, the history, the culture, um, and it keeps us going. You know, we also want to dance with you guys. We also want to perform for you guys and teach you guys. So come to our classes, watch us online, all that kind of good stuff. Just support your local artists. And hopefully this stuff is over quickly so we can get back out there and see everybody. Absolutely. And honestly, it's been a pleasure and an honor to have you both. And like I always tell my guests, this is our first interview. And I definitely don't want it to be our last. And I'd love to have another interview in the future, in the beginning of uh, 2021, to really see where you guys are then. Uh, because I think, too, as well, it's hard to get a full story in just in one interview. So for me, this is kind of like the precursor to mm -hmm. so many more conversations and discussions we can have. And for me, I will definitely be a proponent on making sure and bringing out more voices and to show the representation for black artists and et cetera. Because again, we can't just talk about it. We got to be about it. So for yeah. me, it's uh, more than ever having people like yourselves on. I loved it. I enjoyed everything. Um, I've gotten to know a lot more about Candace. I've gotten to know a lot more about Fuquan and Fuego y Yellow Dance Company. So again, guys, I hope you guys stay safe. Have a beautiful upcoming week as well as the audience. Thank you for tuning in. And we'll definitely be talking soon. And definitely, again, everyone, please stay safe. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.